smells fresh. It smells, it looks nice. Everything about it just is great. What if one train line could change the air we breathe? After decades of diesel fumes and delays, California's Caltrain has pulled off the impossible, a full electrification against all odds. And the results? Nothing short of stunning. Join us as we uncover how a single commuter rail line transforms the Bay Area's skies and sets a new standard for sustainable transit. This is not only about the train story, it can be a clean US in the future to follow the lead of Asian and European countries. Before we dive in, we've got a quick favor to ask. If you're into stories that spark change, literally hit that subscribe button. We're on a mission to hit 5,000 subscribers, and with your help, we're sure to be there. Let's hit that milestone together. Caltrain operates as a vital commuter rail service with the 47-mile route along the San Francisco Peninsula, connecting San Francisco, San Mateo County, and Santa Clara County. The electrification project, part of the Caltrain Modernization Program, transitioned the fleet from diesel to electric multiple units, EMUs, with public revenue service beginning in August 2024 and full electrification achieved by September 2024. In only six weeks, the system retired all 29 of its diesel locomotives and replaced them with 23 new electric trains. The debut of the new trains was the culmination of a $2.44 billion modernization and decarbonization project that first launched in 2017. This shift was driven by goals to improve service efficiency, reduce noise, and enhance environmental sustainability, particularly air quality. A groundbreaking study, recently published in Environmental Science and Technology Letters and led by researchers Samuel J. Cliff and Joshua S. Apte, has delivered hard evidence of just how powerful electrifying Caltrain has been for public health. Before the switch, diesel trains routinely filled passenger cars with exhaust smoke, often so thick, black carbon BC concentrations on board rivaled those measured in the congested traffic of New Delhi. For daily commuters and Caltrain staff, that meant chronic exposure to a known carcinogen linked to long-term health risks. Once the electric trains rolled in, everything changed. Researchers found that black carbon exposure inside the trains dropped by nearly 90%, making the onboard air dramatically cleaner almost overnight. But the impact went far beyond that. San Francisco's Caltrain station, once a smoky and noisy hub at nearly all hours, also saw remarkable changes. Due to a little-known safety regulation, diesel locomotives couldn't be shut down for extended periods without triggering time-consuming inspections. So they were often left idling for hours. That meant the station was constantly bathed in diesel emissions. To track the shift, researchers installed air quality monitors throughout the station during the six-week transition to electric service. The results were clear. Days with fewer idling diesel engines saw noticeably better air quality. And once the diesel fleet was fully retired, levels of black carbon near the station dropped so dramatically that the improvement was equivalent to what California cities achieved over three decades of clean air regulations, all in just a few weeks. The bottom line? Electrification doesn't just modernize transit. It delivers massive public health benefits to riders, workers, and surrounding communities. According to Apte and Cliff's calculations, the reduction in black carbon exposure achieved from Caltrain's electrification cut excess cancer deaths by 51 per 1 million people for riders and 330 per 1 million people for train conductors. For reference, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has a policy that any exposure that increases the average individual's cancer risk by more than one per million is considered unacceptable. Despite moving over a million passengers every weekday across 33 systems, only 10% of U.S. commuter rail route miles are currently electrified. The vast majority still rely on diesel engines, and adoption of cleaner alternatives has been slow. This is a missed opportunity, not just for the environment, but for public health on a national scale. Caltrain, though a relatively small player in terms of fuel consumption, about 5% of the U.S. sector, demonstrated the dramatic benefits of electrification. The system's recently retired diesel locomotives, though outdated and poorly controlled for emissions, were representative of the broader U.S. fleet. Over 60% of commuter rail vehicles still fall into Tier 1, or lower emissions categories. 
Larger systems, like Chicago's Metra, which operates more than 150 diesel locomotives and consumes six times more fuel than Caltrain, stand to deliver even greater gains through electrification. Electric trains don't just offer cleaner air, they're also quieter, more reliable and faster, with significantly reduced greenhouse gas emissions. Since Caltrain launched its electric service in 2024, rider feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. Passengers have praised the smoother, quieter rides and modern features like Wi-Fi and power outlets. Online forums like Reddit are full of comparisons, with many calling the electric trains a massive upgrade over the diesel era experience. While California has long-term plans to modernize its rail infrastructure, this study emphasizes that the benefits of electrification aren't distant ideals, they're immediate and measurable. Delaying these upgrades by another 20 years means prolonging preventable health risks. In fact, when scaled nationwide, researchers estimate hundreds of cancer cases could be prevented each year by reducing exposure to pollutants like black carbon. Apt and Cliff hope the findings inspire U.S. cities to follow the lead of Asian and European nations where electrified rail is already the standard. And while full-scale infrastructure projects take time, the data also point to meaningful interim solutions, like improved railcar filtration or smarter operational practices that can help reduce pollution burdens in the meantime. This study also is a wake-up call. The clean, quiet, and healthy future of rail is electric, and it's already here. With the arrival of electric service on Caltrain's Peninsula Corridor, the railroad has officially retired its aging diesel fleet, a collection of locomotives and gallery cars that faithfully served the Bay Area for nearly 40 years. But instead of heading for the scrapyard, these trains are getting a second life thousands of miles away. Caltrain recently finalized an agreement to send 19 diesel locomotives and 90 passenger cars to the municipality of Lima, Peru. The move, which will reimburse Caltrain over $6 million, is part of a broader effort to launch a new regional commuter rail line in one of South America's most congested urban areas. The U.S. Departments of State and Commerce, along with the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, supported the deal for both its environmental and diplomatic value. In Peru, where electrification isn't financially viable, these second-hand diesel trains represent a rare opportunity to introduce high-capacity rail service without the prohibitive costs of new infrastructure. While Caltrain's own electrification project cost $2.4 billion, even a fraction of that would be far out of reach for a lower middle-income country like Peru. Yet the environmental and public health benefits remain real. Currently, many Lima commuters rely on aging, smoke-belching buses or private vehicles that crawl through gridlocked streets. By comparison, the repurposed Caltrain fleet, capable of speeds up to 100 miles per hour, will not only offer a faster and more comfortable ride, but will help reduce overall emissions, traffic congestion, and air pollution in a city where few can afford a car. In this context, the transfer isn't just a handoff of outdated equipment, it's an international sustainability strategy that improves lives. Still, the move has stirred controversy back home. California State Senator Dave Cortese has introduced a bill to block similar exports in the future, arguing that shipping diesel locomotives abroad simply shifts pollution from one place to another. Cortese, a signatory of the Diesel Free by 33 pledge, contends that California should not export its emissions problems to countries with weaker environmental regulations. His bill could affect other California rail operators like Altamont Corridor Express, ACE, and Amtrak California, which may face restrictions on how they dispose of old diesel equipment in the future. Critics of the bill argue this is a case of letting climate perfectionism get in the way of practical progress. Denying Peru the use of these trains would mean denying the country a low-cost opportunity to improve mobility, reduce local bus pollution, and introduce a rail alternative in its capital, something many wealthier nations take for granted. As one observer noted, even California continues to operate diesel-powered services like Capital Corridor and Altamont Corridor Express, with no immediate plans to electrify. So now, we want to hear from you. Should retired diesel trains be reused in developing countries if it helps cut pollution and improve transit access? Or should California draw a harder line and scrap the engines entirely in the name of climate integrity? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed our content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more stories at the intersection of climate, tech, and transportation. Thanks for riding with us today. 
See you next time.